Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Ellis. I want to talk about food intake, what makes us eat. This is also called the metabolic control of food intake. Now, the diet that you're following dictates this. So when you've got a package and it says there's 100 calories per serving, and you're going to eat that, and you say, okay, I just ate 100 calories. The body does not monitor the calories that go in your mouth. It only monitors the calories that are being burned or stored in your fat tissue. That's the critical point. It monitors the partitioning of fuels. It's sad that we all believe that carbohydrates are the most important fuel for a body because they get partitioned into storage as fat. And those calories end up in your fat cell. They're not available to be burned. They just aren't there. And the active tissues, your heart, your brain, your lungs, your muscles, they just aren't getting enough fuel. So they send a feeding signal to the brain. That's the most important control of food intake, the feeding sig signal that's sent to the brain from the active tissues telling you that you are hungry. And you can't readily access the fat stores in your fat because the nutritional and hormonal profile changes in the blood in response to diet composition. And that locks this fat away, this newly formed fat from carbohydrate, locks it away into your fat cell. And now you're in trouble. So you will overeat. You'll store the, the carbs as fat. You get a feeding signal. And now you'll eat. doesn't matter that you just ate and you thought you were well fed, the active tissues are hungry. So they're going to send a feeding signal. Now you're going to overeat. And overeating is because of the storage of the carbohydrates in the fat cell. That's why you're going to overeat. Now, you want to reverse this. And the only way you can reverse it is to restrict your carbohydrates. Because that now keeps fat flowing freely out of the fat cell takes the fat from your diet, both of those sources, keeps them in the blood, and then you have a source of fat in your, in your tissues, something, for example, called intramuscular triglycerides, and everything gets set up so that you can burn this fat as a source of fuel. And that keeps everything happy. All your tissues become happy. They, they're satisfied. They don't need to send a feeding signal to the brain. So it's important to understand that you got to burn these fuels, you don't want to store them, and this doesn't invalidate the calorie in, calorie out theory. The calories go in, but they don't necessarily go out. They go into fat storage. They aren't being burned. So the calorie theory still holds, but the issue is that the food is getting stored in your fat cell. So it's unfortunate that we believe the carbohydrates are so good for us and fat is so bad because we're really mucking up the way our body actually works, its physiology and its biochemistry. And people are still fighting the low-carbohydrate diet. They're going to continue to fight the low-carb diet because they believe that fat is bad and carbohydrates are good. So the carbohydrates were brought into the diet to replace the fat. And the simplistic notion was that fat has nine calories per gram and carbohydrates only have four. So if we reduce our fat intake, replace it with carbohydrates, then we will cut our calories. But the body does not monitor that. It monitors what it's burning. That's the critical point you have to remember. And our medical elite and our scientific community does not really understand this. Obviously, enough scientists do understand it who have contributed to this body of work showing how the metabolic control of food intake works. Now, you've got to restrict your carbs. You want to get it down to about 60, 70, maybe 80 grams a day. You don't really have to go much lower than that. You don't have to go down to the 20 that Dr. Atkins recommends to get this physiologic effect. You you want to turn over the whole metabolic profile in your body and get it working differently. And then your food intake will go down automatically. You'll lose weight to some degree. Uh, some argue that protein and fat don't make you fat. That's simply not true. 
I've seen people living on no-carbohydrate diets who are, who are fat. They're getting fat because now they're eating too much protein and fat. Even though they've restricted the carbohydrate, they're consuming too much protein and fat. I did it when I first went on a low-carb diet. The Atkins people said, you can eat as much meat and fat as you want, and I did. I ate four pounds of steak at one sitting. That wasn't an issue, and I promptly gained five pounds. So that wasn't a good thing, and gradually I learned to balance the carbohydrate restriction along with the calorie intake, to sort of fine-tuning the whole process. So that's it. That's what food intake's all about, and that's what you need to do and to make yourself happier and healthier. I'm Dr. Greg Ellis.